Hey there, my name is Lauren Perlman. I'm Vice President of Scientific Solutions here at Riffin, and I'm coming, you, coming to you today from HQ in downtown Oakland, which is a little bit of a psychedelic experience because I think it's been almost exactly a year since we went into lockdown. So it's been nice to have a change of venue for at least a day. Um, and I'm really excited to talk to you a bit about building a culture of analytic excellence. Before I get started, I want to thank the folks at SAS, um, first and foremost, for inviting me to do this. It's an honor, um, and it's been really wonderful to work with the team there. And second, because it's afforded me the opportunity to sit back and think um, as an exercise, which is rare in my career, or in my, in my role, I should say, um, and spend some time just thinking philosophically about what makes institutions great, what makes them especially good at analysis, at data management, and how did I get to this point in my career? How do I think about these things in general? So today I'm gonna to talk about my introductory thoughts about analytic excellence and culture, um, some learnings about analytic excellence throughout my career, how I got to today, um, how I would define a culture of analytic excellence, and how to sort of get started in doing that, how to implement one. Um, and finally, talk a little bit about how Riffin is helping establish a culture of excellence with a number of our partners. So first, um, in putting this together, I thought a lot about what analytic excellence is, and it prompted me to ask a series of questions as I thought through it. First, I thought, is it being amazing at the end product at statistical analysis and modeling? Is it creating conditions, sort of the meta support structure to enabling great analysis and modeling? Is it the technical systems that provision data and process information to support conditions to great analysis and modeling? Or is it a journey that never quite reaches a destination? Is it sort of a continuous improvement concept at its heart? And the conclusion I've come to is it's all of these things and probably many more, as we'll see through some examples. And I also kind of did the pedantic scientist thing and wanted to research what uh, people are defining culture as these days, particularly in the context of this talk. And I landed on a definition that I really liked because um, I think it stresses the points that are most valuable to thinking about this. Culture is learned patterns of perception, values, and behaviors shared by a group of people that are dynamic and heterogeneous. And I bolded shared, dynamic, and heterogeneous because I thought those stood out as the concepts in the sentence that were most important because by being shared, it implies an organization-wide concept. I should be able to see it anywhere I am in some form or another. It constantly evolves and changes, so it's dynamic, and it should. It should adapt to the current needs of an organization. And it's heterogeneous, which means it's not one thing. The context of where culture is taking place matters, and that place should reflect what it needs most. So I'm gonna kind of jump to the punchline um, and tell you what I think a culture of analytic excellence is, and then we'll do a bit of a deep dive on my career, or maybe not a deep dive, a light touch, <laughs> I don't wanna bore you. Um, that kind of led me to this conclusion. Um, so first and foremost, much like my career, I think a culture of analytic excellence begins with education. People need to know the concepts and the content that helps enable strong analytic capabilities, a mindset towards um, you know, a data-driven culture. And it continues into your career with on-the-job expectations and continuous training. And I think it's important to ask the question, what do we define the role of a scientist or technician to be? And I, I find with a lot of customers, with a lot of partners, and in my experience in the scientific field, that there's a pretty broad disparity in experience and capabilities in performing analytics. And I think it would be valuable to us to provide people with more opportunities to grow in this space, to enable more and expect more of people so that our job isn't just the handiwork of science, but actually 
um, the analysis and conclusion driving. It's the concept of data as a core asset, that data is the most critical thing any organization makes, especially early young organizations, because that's what enables more investment and partnership capabilities. And even mature organizations need data to derive how to best make products, how to improve efficiencies. And so I often say that product production is a byproduct of strong data collection practices. Great experimentation and data aggregation is going to enable you to make a lot of great stuff. And as a corollary, data management and utilization needs to be a core capability. It's not enough just to have data warehoused in silos. You want to have it available to people to be utilized, to be understood as broadly and deeply as possible. It comes with the associated articulation of process models. Um, we want to know how we made things. It's not enough just to have some basic parameters and quality measurements, but a deep dive on the process that leads to it so we can find the subtleties that really help us to make improvements. It's engaging in fair data practices. It's making your data global, understandable to all, interoperable, reusable, um, you know, basically just embracing data as an organization-wide asset. And finally, I think it's the liberal use of design of experiments to be more efficient and to understand your systems more. You know, I've been in a lot of environments where one factor at a time approaches are used because they're comfortable. It's what people know. It's often what we do in grad school, unfortunately. And it's just not quite up to snuff when you're in an industrial workplace that moves fast. And so embracing DOE, educating people on it and expecting it is going to pay pretty significant dividends. So I'm going to talk a bit about my career and my experience and how I arrived at those conclusions. And one thing I want to point out is that, you know, life isn't a straight line, even though it often looks that way from the outside. You don't just get up and spend 15 years getting to a point. You, you take a path and that path is often circuitous um, and takes you on a lot of side quests. And so that's that's been my experience. And I'm very grateful for it because that's where you learn all the great stuff. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about my scientist journey. Each step of my path provided me with lessons about what analy analytic excellence is about. And that comes with the good, the stuff that I took away from the experience that I use to this very day, the bad. And I put bad in quotes because nothing's really bad. It's just maybe things that I learned to do differently or things I would have done differently if given another chance. And then hopefully there's nothing ugly in the mix. 